All right, so we're going to continue with our uh, progress on our level. So what I'd like to do now is uh, just delete everything that we don't need. And then just a quick reminder, if ever there's an error, press the F key and uh, brings you back to the uh, main screen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to delete a bunch of the items that are uh, in this level so that we can actually build our landscape. So I'm just going to start clicking on things and get rid of everything. If you noticed that uh, I said to keep the sky sphere, the light and the third per person player. And also this, uh, let's just get rid of all this. Let's get rid of this text. Let's get rid of that. And you know, you can see in your world outlier, there's a wall left here. So I'll just, you can click here and delete it. And basically everything in there. We're keeping the lights, we'll keep the fog, we'll keep all these things that uh, uh, are kind of useful. And uh, I did notice I just left this little rotating thing, the document actor. Let's get rid of that. Maybe I want to navigate just in case I miss something tiny. The sky sphere, that I want to keep. Uh, you know, you can always turn these off, by the way, to see what happens when I turn that off. Uh, maybe sometimes it's nothing, uh, but often... If you're not sure, just just leave it there. Uh, skylight, where's the sky sphere? Right here. So you see, it starts. In fact, we we want to keep most this look. All right. So, all right. So we're going to begin building the landscape. It's under modes. We're going to click landscape, which you can see where it's going to show up. The landscape, basically, this green uh, mesh is really uh, where it's coming up. So one of the things we're going to do is I'm going to just shrink it a little bit, okay? Because we're not building a, uh, you know, super complicated world. We just want a, a level to practice and uh, we could still build a game in this if we want it after. And I'm just going to leave it at the defaults, but I changed it. 63 by 63 is a lot larger. And I think for what we're doing, 31 by 31 is good enough. And what I'm going to do now is click create. Okay, so... You could actually click with your brush and start painting. I don't know if you see it made a little mound, but I'm going to control Z that because I want to paint from on high. So I'm going to press the right mouse button and the E key on the keyboard. And you're going to see it's going very slowly. So what I want to do is I'm going to change this to like seven or something. And there you go. Very fast because I have a big landscape and there you are. So. What I want to do now is start sculpting. So just so you know, right now I'm using the circle brush. Strength is at about 30, which is probably good enough. And a uh, couple tips. When I press, you'll see it creates a mountain. Okay. And uh, if I want to flatten the mountain, I press the shift key. Okay. So... What I usually do is with my students is we start by creating an edge. Now, there, you know, there's ways to prevent the player from falling off. But what we want to do is just create the edge here and sort of uh, create a different mountain range and so on. And one of the things I want to mention is I put a link in the uh, class notes to uh, alpha brushes which instead of having a perfectly round brush, an alpha brush could make it look a little bit more. Uh, and really, all it's very simple. You just click on it and upload them. But for the tutorials, I won't put them in, uh, but you can go get that link and, uh, and get that. So sometimes, too, maybe you think the strength is not high enough. You could increase it. Um, let's just show you what that looks like, 0.5. And just see what happens is the mount goes up a lot quicker. Another useful tip is that the uh, bracket tool on your keyboard makes it go larger. It's a lot like Photoshop. So let's say I wanted a bigger mountain range over here. Uh, and, you know, you can, what we'll do too is we can go in and, and I'm going to shrink that back. So close bracket goes and makes it small again. And so what we're basically doing is creating a landscape around the edge. But you could come in and start creating. And we're going to create a little lake over here. So I'm going to press the shift key. And it's going to go down. Or maybe it's not a lake. Maybe it's a crater. 
And there's other tools here too that uh, the smooth tool is really useful. So I'm going to zoom in again instead of a, a E to go up. I'm going to use the Q key. So the right click. So I'm going to press Q and right click, and there it goes down. And you know all the and now using the smooth tool, maybe I want to and maybe it's a little too powerful at 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.5. So I'll go 0.2 because I don't want the smoothing to be too much. Uh, just to make whatever I did really quick look a little bit better. And, you know, this is the sculpting stage. So you want to make it look like what you want. You know, there's other tools in here that are pretty cool. Like, but we probably won't see it if I use Hydro. Uh, what it does is it makes the, the landscape not look perfect. Uh, and maybe down here, because I'm going to go there a lot. So that makes it look like water affected it. it noise makes it look like it's damaged over time. Uh, you know, you could add a ramp which is basically you click here and there and then press enter. And as you can see, it created a little ramp that your character could go up. So a lot of things like that. And what you want to focus on finishing all the sculpting. Now, one of the things you're going to notice that probably, oops, I want to turn that off. Just turn that on. Click on the sculpt tool here is that there's these lines. So how do we get rid of that? To get rid of the lines, you're going to turn off the landscape tool and select the background. And you're going to notice that, uh, give me a second here. What we're going to do is we're going to find the light source. And what we're going to do is change it to movable. And just by doing that, now it has a performance impact and kind of uses more uh, CPU if you like, but the, it won't matter for a small level like this. So uh, we definitely want this to, to, to look this way. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two volumes. So the light mass importance volume, basically it basically controls uh, the light so that it doesn't go beyond this scene. That's like a real boiled down version. And the post process volume is that you can add a bunch of effects through here, which uh, you know, maybe your students want to play around with. Um, I probably won't cover it in this video because it's a little bit more advanced, but that's something as a next step that you could definitely do. So d using the uh, R key, which I talked about, and, you know, I'm going to just move with my mouse like this and make sure it goes all the way out from the outside. And I'll go on the, and I probably want to make sure, I maybe even want to expand it from the middle here so that it covers the mountain range. So basically that's what you want with that. And now same thing with the light mass importance volume. It's okay if it's not, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, you want to try to have it cover everything. And basically if you're not sure you can go in and have a look, it looks like it covered it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So in the last step is saving it. So, in Unreal Engine, this is something that confuses a lot of people. You usually have to save it twice, okay? So I usually click Save All here. And if you had created a level, which we haven't, but what I always do is also go up here. So there's two places to save. So now our, our progress is saved. Next time we open it, this level will be like this, okay?